Parents, listen up. You have until tomorrow to decide what this school year will look like for your children. The choice between fully remote learning or a hybrid model comes as the state continues to review detailed plans submitted by each school district for reopening. Schools Chancellor of New York City, Richard Carranza, joining me now with a special message for parents. And good morning to you, Chancellor. How are you doing? Good morning, Dan. Hey, before we doing get well. to that. Uh, before we get to the message for your parents, which we will get to, can we talk about the updated school reopening plans that were submitted earlier this week? They're now under review, as we know, by the state education officials. A lot of parents want to know, what will a school day look like for students who attend in-person classes? So I want to be very clear that school will not look like it did last fall. Uh, it's just because of all of the things that we have to do around safety and security for our students, the, the social distancing, the wearing of personal protection equipment, the masks, the, the hand washing, the, the sanitation. So anyone in person should just expect it's going to look different. It's not going to be back to the good old days. So it's going to look different. Everything that I just talked about, PPE, sanitation, social distancing, smaller class sizes, the limiting of movement in the school buildings, uh, one-way hallways, one-way exits, to limit the interaction between uh, human beings. Uh, that's part of the guidance that the medical professionals so have given us. Before I get into the nitty gritty details of the actual plan, I want to get your take on this. Over the weekend, the governor criticized New York City schools for submitting an outline rather than a detailed plan. I want to give you the chance to respond to the governor. Um, you know, I have, I have great respect for the governor. You know, because of the work that the governor and the mayor have done, we went from being the epicenter of the epicenter to now being one of the only school system of the 10 largest in America that can even consider in-person learning because of the low community spread. And that's because of all of the things that we've done. But, you know, as a teacher, when I gave an assignment, uh, uh, students would say, uh, Mr. Carranza, how many pages does it have to be? And I would say, as many as it takes. So the number of pages doesn't equate to the rigor of the content of, of what's on those pages. Our Understood. plan is a solid plan, lots of details, and we stand behind it. So I want to get into some of the specific details that parents are wondering about. So how many students will be allowed in a classroom at one time? And then for those who aren't in that classroom, where do they go? So it's all based on the square footage in that classroom. But generally speaking, there will be no more than 9 to 12 students in a classroom. That's for the vast majority of our classrooms in New York City. Now, the other students, uh, obviously, if you have more students than that, you have to create another classroom environment. That's why our principals have been hard at work with their school leadership teams in identifying other venues in their schools that can be converted to classrooms. Some of them will include cafeterias. Some of them will include gymnasium space. Some folks that have the ability to have outdoor learning are looking at what that outdoor mm -hmm. learning will look like. Uh, so you name it. Uh, principals and school communities are identifying what additional spaces would look like. So uh, that also means there'll be additional staff needed to staff those additional spaces as well. What happens, parents have until tomorrow to decide if they want to do this hybrid model of attending some classes during the day, other days remote learning. What if they don't choose by tomorrow? So there will still be an opportunity for parents to opt into remote learning. So this is what's going to happen. We need to know if a parent and family has already made the decision that they're going to be complete remote learning because then everyone else is automatically considered to be in person in a blended learning environment. That's important because principals have to program their schools and they have to know how many students are actually going to be coming in person. Yeah. Now, if a parent doesn't indicate their preference by tomorrow, the parent can all always opt out at any moment into full remote learning okay but a parent that has opted out into full remote learning will not be able to opt back in to in-person blended learning until some date in the future so what happens this is the million dollar question what happens if a student or teacher contracts coronavirus while there is in-person learning right you're in a classroom you find out hey a, a student tested positive what happens to that school yeah, so first and foremost, Dan, uh, this, listen, we have done an incredible job in New York because we haven't politicized mask wearing. We've done everything the, the medical professionals have asked us. Coming back to school is going to be the same thing. We need your cooperation. If your child is sick or feeling sick, keep them home. They will still be able to have remote learning. Now, if, if a child gets sick in school or an adult uh, in a classroom, 
those students in that classroom and the teacher uh, will quarantine for 14 days if one case. Okay. If there are two right. cases in separate classrooms in a building, then the entire school will be shut down for 24 hours. The test and trace detectives will do their work, and then we will notify the so families when we'll be able to open up How again. are you monitoring all of that? Because we had the teachers union on. They had some concerns. There's been these reports of you don't have enough nurses to actually monitor. The ventilation systems in so many schools is old and not updated. And there's also a possibility of a teacher shortage. So how do you maintain the safety of everybody with those three obstacles in your way? So we're working uh, very closely with the, the teacher union and the administrators union. In fact, we have a working session today. So we're, we're chugging through every single one of those detailed questions. Now, the nursing question, we are actively working right now with uh, City Hall around solving that particular issue as well. Uh, and the, 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 the personnel issue is also something that we're tackling. But when you have those, that is good. When you have those issues, anyone, Chancellor, and, and you look at cities yeah. like L.A., Miami, Houston, Chicago, D.C., they've halted and gone remote learning. Is there a possibility of saying maybe we're not ready? Well, look, all of those cities have community transmission in, in, in the high uh, single digits, sometimes in double digits. We are hovering between 1% and 2%. Now, should, and the mayor's been very clear, the state has said 5% rolling average. We've said 3%. So the mayor and I will not hesitate to close down in-person learning and transition to full remote learning if our indicators start ticking upwards. Right now, they're holding steady. Okay. So that's why okay. we're, we're, we're moving full steam ahead for a September Good. launch of in-person learning. Uh, now, I want to get to your message for parents. We had this parent advocate from the Bronx that we spoke to last week. She told us that schools in her district are not ready to open. They've been disinfected. Ventilation systems haven't been upgraded, like I mentioned. But you want to address some of those concerns for those parents. So walk me through what, you, what your message is here. Well, there's more than a month until in-person learning will happen. In fact, those schools all have been disinfected. They're going to be disinfected again. In fact, we're in the middle of doing that. As we speak, ventilation systems are being upgraded, uh, and they're being upgraded to the highest standard that, that, that exists on the market. That is happening as we speak. Uh, in addition to that, electrostatic uh, disinfectors uh, have now arrived. They're being uh, they're being deployed to school buildings as okay. we speak. Uh, tons of PPE and disinfectant are arriving on a daily basis. We're going to be providing that to schools. So we are actively preparing for what an in-person learning experience will look like. So for parents, listen, I understand. I'm a parent myself. I get it. Uh, but there is a process, there is a, a huge effort that is being made to be sure that we're ready for uh, the start of in-person learning. And uh, let me just assure you that health and safety will always come first, and we will not put our students or our staff uh, in harm's way uh, for in-person learning. Understood. Chancellor Carranza, September 10th is the day? September 10th is still the day. All right, thank you. And maybe one day I can attend the class of Richard Carranza on how to properly care for plants because my plants don't look like yours and they look amazing. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time this morning and explaining this very important issue for parents.